Well, here we are at the end. And just as I predicted, it was not worth it. I said in my review for the previous episode that I wasn't expecting much, and in that sense I wasn't disappointed, which paradoxically means I was still disappointed. There is a lot that this episode does wrong, everyone. For example, there's how Aiko is suddenly a main character, and all of the major stuff she does is just sort of sprung on us all at once. Come to think of it, I'm not even sure what she actually did. She did something, but it got no explanation at all. Then there was how the episode committed to its change in Raharu slash Haruko's motivation. She doesn't just want Adamisk for his power, she wants him because she really is in love with him. I've actually decided I would have been okay with that if Fully Cooly Progressive had been a reboot as opposed to a sequel. Had it been a reboot with no connection to the original, then I could have looked at it and said, okay, they've clearly changed Raharu's character and gone in a different direction, but since it's a separate thing with no connection, there's no contradiction. But no, they committed to it, they decided her motivation was different, and thereby showed that they completely missed the point of her character. Quick aside before I continue, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the irony that the series is called Fully Cooly Progressive, yet the finale ultimately boils down to two women fighting over a man. I'm not gonna say anything more than that, I'm not here to make any sort of grand socio-political statements about the portrayal of women in pop culture, but I just know other anime reviewers are probably going to use that as ammunition against this series, so... May as well get the lead on it. If no one else has done it yet, you heard it here first. But as with all things in this series, the real problems, once again, come down to Hidomi. Yes, I know I keep harping on her, but she is one of the worst main characters I've seen in a very long time. First of all, there's the way in which this episode suddenly acts like Hidomi's relationship with her mother, Hinai, is the most important one in the series. That's one of the big moments in this episode. Now, I know you're probably sick of hearing me constantly compare Progressive to the original series, but, well, in the original series, Nauta's relationship with his father, Kamen, was a central part of the series. Kamen appears in every single episode of Fooly Cooly. He's not prominently featured in every episode, per se, and he doesn't interact with Nauta in every episode, but he's still there, and his relationship with Nauta is clear. In fact, it is the driving force of a couple of episodes. Even when he's not with Nauta, we get a sense of what their relationship is like. The relationship between Hidomi and Hinai is practically non-existent. Hinai's barely even been in the series. I might not have ever brought her up at all if not for the last episode suddenly deciding she's important. She and Hidomi have had... what? Two, maybe three meaningful interactions over the course of the entire series? That's just not enough for me to really get a proper sense of what their relationship is like. And no, the fact that a couple of their exchanges tended to be exposition-heavy doesn't really help. She's still been completely absent for most of the series. Now, you might argue that absence of interaction is the point, and there are several lines that would back up your assessment. However... Even that lack of interaction doesn't feel like it was emphasized enough. You watch enough anime, you realize that absentee parents or a lack of interaction between child characters and their parental figures is pretty common. It's almost expected at this point. If you're going to have the lack of interaction between a child and a parent be meaningful, you really have to emphasize it in this medium. And Fully Cooly Progressive didn't emphasize it enough. Now suddenly we're supposed to care about this mother-daughter relationship above everything else that's happened? I'm sorry, Fully Cooly Progressive, but you did not earn the right to say that. And then, of course, there's the fact that Hidomi continues to be one of the most passive protagonists I've ever seen. I have pointed out many times up to this point that Hidomi has not done a single thing in this series of her own accord. Every time she has affected the outcome of how things play out, it's been an involuntary reaction, or it's been prompted by somebody else. This episode was her last chance to actually take charge, 
to have that moment where she finally stands up and does something for herself consciously and deliberately. So we get a scene where she is about to remove her headphones, but then Raharu strangely talks her out of it. Even though Raharu has been trying to get her to remove the headphones this whole time. So Hidomi doesn't remove the headphones. Instead, that job falls to Conti. Yeah, you remember Conti, the TV-headed robot from the first series. He first appeared in Progressive a couple episodes ago, but he was in ruins. They were deriving technology from him, and he was basically deactivated and in pieces. Now in this episode, he suddenly appears, fully put back together and fully functional and conscious, without any explanation by the way, and he's the one who removes Hidomi's headphones. In fact, he destroys them. That should have been the moment for Hidomi to actually do something and become an active character, and it wasn't given to her. It was assigned to Conti, who came out of nowhere, making him a literal deus ex machina. You know, I can think of so many ways Hidomi could have been portrayed as an actual proper character, but what's the point in saying any of them now? The series is over. Speaking of which, there's a moment towards the end where the old guy who was wearing the dodo suit says that one of the other side characters can go home, and that character asks, so, why did all of this stuff happen? And the old guy says, it happened for no reason at all. Now this is presented as kind of a moral, or the message of the series. As if it's saying, yeah, sometimes life is just a bunch of random crazy events and all you can do is roll with it. However, when juxtaposed with how poorly everything was handled, it feels more like the series is saying, yeah, we just wasted your time by showing you a bunch of stuff that didn't amount to anything. Screw you very much. Buy our merchandise at the next anime convention you go to. And frankly, I have no counter-argument to that. Now I just want to go and watch the original series again so I can remember why I enjoyed it. The last thing we saw was a teaser for Fooly Cooly Alternative, the other sequel that will be premiering on September 8th. I wish I could say I was looking forward to it, I suppose there's a possibility it might be an improvement. I've certainly got plenty of time to decide whether or not I'm even going to bother. As for Fully Cooly Progressive, though, it was a waste of time. It's a bad follow-up to a great series, and a bad series in its own right. And worst of all, it didn't even need to exist. I can't really say there was a genuine need for Fully Cooly to have a sequel. There was just no way they could have captured that lightning in a bottle again. A commenter on the previous episode's review said that a lot of what I was saying sounded like what people said in response to the first series. I can't speak to any of that, but I can say this as far as my own views are concerned. I won't try to convince you that I understood everything about the first Fooly Cooly after I'd finished watching it. Of course I didn't. Getting all of the subtext and nuance was something I needed multiple viewings in order to achieve. But the first time I watched it, I still had the feeling, even though I didn't fully comprehend it, that the show had at least gotten the basics right. And that beneath those basics was something a little more, that if I dug a bit deeper, I could find out and that would enrich the experience. Having finished Fully Cooly Progressive, I can say that it didn't get the basics right. Is there more subtext and nuance to be gained from it? Well, maybe, but I don't necessarily feel like there's much point in looking for it. Ultimately, Fooly Cooly Progressive will be remembered as a very poor sequel. Unlike the original, this is not a series that will be fondly remembered by Otaku in the years to come. And you know what? That's a crying shame. <laughs>